Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونسلي ونسلم على رسوله النبي الأمين المكين الحنين الكريم الرؤوف الرحيم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة صدق الله مولانا العظيم مولاي صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم محمد سيد الكونين والثقلين والفريقين من عرب ومن عجم My dear respected viewers I greet you with the Islamic greeting of peace Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu May Allah's peace blessings and mercy be with you Alhamdulillah in today's episode we are going to continue our discourse on who is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam He is a man who gave the solutions of the problems that mankind would be suffering until the Day of Judgment. So we have discussed in our previous episodes some of the problems that mankind is suffering and the solution that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam gave through the Khutbah Hujjatul Wida, the infamous final ceremony of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which he gave to all of his companions, most of his companions that were present at that time and the, um, the khutbah that amazingly contains a small part of it that deals with the rights of the Lord and a major part of it that deals with the rights of the creation. And in it, Rasulullah gave the solutions of the problems that mankind is suffering today and would be suffering until the Day of Judgment. Some of the problems that we are going to discuss now in detail with the verses of the Quran and with the hadith of Rasulullah how he gave the solution through his prophetic conduct, prophetic statements and pr practical demonstration. These problems are the problem of justice or you could say the problem of injustice in fact. The problem of difference of race and color, yani racism and discrimination. The problem of economic exploitation. The problem of poverty, hunger and famine. The problem that women are deprived from their rights, the status of women, sexual life, youth frustration, mental health, climate control, environmental health. The Prophet ﷺ also talked about terrorism. He at the same time gave solution to the problem of terrorism and in today's life all the problems that I have just mentioned are problems that we are facing at this very moment. Mankind is facing this very moment. Why do we need to study the seerah? Why do we need, while we are living in 2015, we need to study the seerah. We need to study the seerah, the life of the Prophet wasallam, so we can find out the solutions to the problems that we are facing. And the purpose and aim of the seerah is not just merely to read it, merely to find out about it, f become aware about it. The purpose of seerah is ittiba, is following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And once mankind will follow the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And of course we start with the Muslim ummah. We start with the Muslim world. Once the Muslim world will start to follow the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam completely, not partly, completely, then not only will it honor, will it, create, will it give the Muslims its 
lost muqam, it's lost status, but at the same time, the world will be a much better place in which we are living today. One of the problems that we are facing today is the problem of injustice. That in societies, we find that even if there is law and order, then in some societies, these are only for particular people, or, you would say, or we could say that there are different rules for one type of people, and for other types of people, there are different rules and standards. The Prophet ﷺ was living also 1400 years ago in a society that faced the, the problem of injustice. People that were oppressed and they were deprived from their basic rights. When there was law, the law would not ap apply on the rich people, on those that used to oppress. On the oppressors, the law did not apply. It would only apply on the oppressed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam once, a, a, a woman named Fatima was granted, was given the ruling of the had, which in Islam is wasariqu wasariqatu faqta'u aydiyahuma. And this lady belonged to a very, very important and very significant tribe, a very powerful tribe. When the Prophet وسلم, according to the legislation of the Quran, gave the ruling on the matter of theft, some Sahaba came to Rasulullah and they wanted to ask Rasulullah to grant her amnesty or to be lenient with her and not to apply the rule, not to apply the had that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Holy Quran. And I just want to clarify here that the had of the Quran that is wasariqu wasariqatu faqta'u aydiyahuma that you cut the hands is a law that is wrongly interpreted by many today. It is highly misunderstood by many today. In Islam, what did the Prophet ﷺ gave as a solution? The Prophet ﷺ gave the following solution, that law should be applied on everyone equally. Even the had of wasariq wasariq tufaqta aidiyahuma, the, the had of qat ayyad, this is a had that is applied when certain very strict conditions are met. In this particular case of this lady Fatima, the conditions were fulfilled. So the ruling was the had. When the Sahaba came to the Prophet wasallam to ask the Prophet wasallam to suggest to the Prophet wasallam to change his mind and not to apply the had of the Quran, the, the Prophet wasallam replied back that, O oh my Sahaba, O oh my companions, even if it was Fatima bint Muhammad. Even if it was my daughter, Fatima, and she would have done, that she would have the say, done the same illegal uh, criminal act, then the same had would be applied on Fatima bint Muhammad. There would be no differentiation between applying the law on Fatima bint Muhammad and this lady Fatima. So here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the concept of equality, of social justice. Justice is for all equal. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam 1400 years ago gave the solution to the problem. He said, if there is a standard, one standard, it should be applied equally on every community. If there is a law, a legislation, it should be applied on equally on every community, on every individual, irrespective of his race, irrespective of his gender, irrespective of his nationality. And this is the solution that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam gave. Then another problem that we are facing today is the problem of difference of race and color. We see racism, we see discrimination, and this racism and discrimination to a very large extent in, to up to a very large extent in Western countries has minimized. This concept 
of equality in race. This concept of equality is a concept that was given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. It's a concept that was introduced to mankind by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We look down upon people because of their gender, because of race, because of the religion, while Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam trembled all these false bogus claims of superiority and different differences by saying the following ya ayyuhannas in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the sahaba ya ayyuhannas o mankind addressing all of mankind inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin aw untha وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَاعِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Allah Almighty, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah Al-Hujrat, chapter number 49, verse number 13, says, O mankind, we have created you from one single human being, man, and one single female, and all of you together, from Adam alayhi salam and Eve alayhi salam, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا and we have then made you into different tribes, not because one tribe or one race is better than another, one community is better than another, no. The reason for differences in communities, differences in the diversity that you see in mankind is not because one is better than another, no, the diversity is so you may recognize each other. And in the akramakum, in the Allah atqakum, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all are equal. Who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, dear viewers? He is the man that gave the concept of human equality. He is the man that told humanity that no matter what gender, what race, what community you belong to, you are all equal. You should be dealt equally. Everyone should be having equal opportunities. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the one who then also said, لا فوق لعربي على عجمي ولا لعجمي على عربي إلا التقوى There is no superiority of an of a Arab upon a non-Arab. Of a non-Arab upon an Arab. There is no concept of superiority. إِلَّا التَّقْوَى Except taqwa, except God fairness. So this is another problem that mankind is suffering and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gave it solution. Another problem that we are seeing is the problem of economic exploitation. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again gave a command. He commanded for economic justice to eradicate and eliminate economical exploitation. Another problem that mankind is facing today is the problem of environmental health, is the problem of climate control. And again, this is a problem that we humans have uh, are, are the reason behind. It is us that have turned the planet Earth into, uh, a, dis uh, into d a disaster, you could say. We have turned and uh, we have created these problems. We should not blame Almighty Allah. Like some people blame God for the problems that mankind is suffering. In fact, all these problems are due to our attitude, due to the way we have been dealing with the, with the planet. We have been dealing with the climate. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 1400 years ago, gave the concept of environmental health and gave the concept of climate control. Looking after the plant, look, looking, looking after the nature, looking after the planet, when nobody in the world would have ever thought, nobody could have imagined, nobody could have imagined, and this concept until only a few decades ago has been introduced in the Western world, and the United Nations is, and many other NGOs are anxious to solve this problem of climate control. There are huge symposiums, seminars conferences organized on international level where many professionals experts experts come together to solve the problem of climate control and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave its solution 1400 years ago and he says that ma min muslim yaghrusu gharsan illa kana ma akala minhu lahu sadaqa and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he commanded for a plantation of trees he commanded for cleanliness and he said that in qamat al 
وَبَيْدَ أَحَدَكُمْ He says, if the, if the day of judgment has arrived, and you have in your hand a plant tree, you have in your hand that sapling, and you hold it, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that, يَغْرِسَهَا فَلْيَفْعَلْ And you can plant it into the ground, even if the day of judgment is taking place, do not wait and plant that into the ground. Which means the importance and significance of looking after the, 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 the environment. That if you have a chance to plant a tree, your small and smallest contribution to the planet, even that contribution is so significant, would the day of judgment occur? And you are there at the day of judgment and in your hand you're holding a sapling. Do not wait, just do plant it into the ground. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to point our direction, our attention to the importance of a clean environment. We take many things for granted. We use the resources of this planet without taking into consideration that we have to use the blessings of Allah in modesty. We have to use them in balance. And we have to try to... And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa for example, said that the person who does israf, who excessively uses water during wuzu, during ablution, is a person that commits a sin. Even the act of using excessive water during ablution to clean yourself, your body, for the prayer, is seen, is seen as a sin, is, is introduced as a sin by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And this concept that to look after the amount of water that you are spending during cleaning yourself, during taking a shower, is something that only the Western countries have only realized the past decades. But Islam, 1400 years ago, gave the concept of looking after the planet. Inshallah, my dear viewers, in the next episode, we will continue our discourse. Who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He is a man who gave the solutions to the problems that mankind is suffering today. Until the next episode, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.